Why Ukraine should continue to destroy oil refineries in Russia. Foreign Affairs explains reasons. Ukraine must continue attacks on Russian refineries because this harms the aggressor and cannot negatively affect the global oil market. Foreign Affairs writes about this. In total, since October, Ukraine has carried out at least 20 strikes on Russian refineries. By the end of March, Ukraine had destroyed about 14% of Russia's oil refining capacity and forced the Russian government to impose a six-month ban on gasoline exports. One of the world's largest oil producers now imports gasoline, but the Biden administration criticized the attacks. In February, Vice President Kamala Harris called on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to refrain from attacks on Russian oil refineries over concerns that the strikes would lead to higher global oil prices. Echoing this sentiment, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warned the Senate Armed Services Committee in mid-April that the attacks could have a spillover effect on the global energy situation. Instead of targeting oil infrastructure, Austin said, Ukraine should focus on pursuing tactical and operational objectives that could directly impact the ongoing fight. Criticism from Washington is misplaced. Attacks on refineries will not have the impact on global energy markets that US officials fear. These attacks reduce Russia's ability to turn its oil into usable products. They do not affect the amount of oil it can produce or export. In fact, with less domestic refining capacity, Russia will be forced to export more of its crude oil, not less, pushing world prices down rather than up. Foreign Affairs writes, The publication notes that while Ukrainian attacks are limited to Russian oil refineries, they are unlikely to lead to an increase in world oil prices. At the same time, these blows could cause pain inside Russia, where prices for petroleum products such as gasoline and diesel fuel have begun to rise sharply. These strikes achieve the same goals that Ukraine's Western partners set for themselves throughout sanctions and caps on the price of Russian oil, but which have largely not been achieved. To degrade Russia's financial and logistical ability to wage war, while limiting broader damage to the global economy, Kyiv must win where it can, and the campaign to destroy Russian oil refining capacity benefits Ukraine with limited risk. The publication says, The publication notes that Ukraine has focused its attacks specifically on oil refineries and not on oil fields or crude oil export infrastructure. The difference is important. Foreign Affairs emphasizes. Israel's Defense Force, IDF, has announced that it is currently engaging in attacks in Rafah. The IDF said it is conducting targeted strikes against Hamas in eastern Rafah. Due to the attacks carried out by Israel, aid depots caught fire and some aid trucks were damaged in the attack. The fire was later brought under control. The attack was carried out after Israel announced that it would start a ground operation in Rafah. Earlier, Israel called on Palestinians evacuate parts of eastern Rafah ahead of planned ground offensive in the southern Gaza city. According to the Israeli army radio, about 100,000 Palestinians lived in the area east of Rafah. The area that the Israeli army wants to be evacuated includes the Rafah border gate on the Egyptian border, which is the main entry point for humanitarian aid into Gaza and the only crossing point used by Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Around 100,000 people are instructed to head for an expanded humanitarian area in Khan Yunus and Al Mawasi. U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday reiterated Washington's concerns about Rafah's invasion. In a conversation with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Biden said that a ceasefire with Hamas was the best way to protect the lives of Israeli hostages held in Gaza, a National Security Council spokesperson said on condition of anonymity. Israel has been threatening an assault on Rafah for months to go after Hamas in the area, but Monday's evacuation orders put into motion the beginning stages of an expected attack that aid agencies and even Israel's allies have warned against. Israeli strikes in Rafah reportedly killed at least 19 people overnight, while four Israeli soldiers were killed in a Hamas rocket attack near the Karim Shalom crossing.